Hi there, my name is Ken Mayer. I'll be your instructor for this course. I have been working in this industry for the last 30 some odd years. Of course, that means I've had the chance to watch personal computers, not only first get introduced into the market, but also become as popular as they are today. Working with a variety of different operating systems that uh, we start off, of course, with uh, just the command lines with uh, what we call DOS back in those days to some of the first introductions to Windows, like Windows 3.1 that got uh, very popular very quickly, working with, uh, as well with competing uh, vendors uh, through the Macintosh environment and some of the others that were kind of on the upstart but didn't quite survive. But anyway, we fast forward to that, uh, where I was working also in the business of building some computers. I love building my own home servers. So I'm going to hopefully be able to show you through all of my experience how to be able to get uh, comfortable with the personal computer and with Windows 8 and be able to make it something that's manageable and very useful for you in a practical application. In this lesson we're going to talk about what the actual personal computer is and also introduce you to the Windows 8 user interface and our goal of course is to try to help you put those together that the operating system was designed to help you interact with the actual hardware. So we'll identify the uh, most common components of a personal computer, we'll talk about how to sign into Windows 8 and then uh, the navigation of the first start screen that you see when we're there. All right, in this topic, we're going to uh, cover the desktop PC. But I will also want to talk a little bit about some of the other types of devices that you may come across that are also going to use Windows 8. All right, we'll start off first, I guess, talking about the system unit. Uh, it's gone through a lot of different names over time. You may still hear uh, people talk about uh, having a tower and uh, when you see the tower, basically you're looking at something that's standing upright versus uh, a desktop uh, option of the system unit, which just meant that it was this tower tipped on its side. And, uh, and of course, in some of the PCs you might buy, you might not even see the system unit because it'll be integrated in with the monitor. But let's talk about what the system unit is. The system unit is the uh, computer itself. That's where you're going to house the CPU, the central processing unit that does all of our work, where we're going to have the memory that uh, is crucial for the applications and for just basic uh, functionality of the operating system. And we'll also probably have some sort of storage in there that you often would call the hard drive. And there's a number of other components that you would see inside of uh, this uh, system unit. Uh, some of you may see a network interface card. You may have uh, one that was designed for wireless network that we call Wi-Fi. And there's, again, many other components that uh, you, you would see inside, but uh, I don't want to go through and list every single one. It would take a long time. But uh, one of the things that's important to understand is that uh, it is when you're looking at the uh, purchase of one, you've got to ask some of the questions, especially about memory and storage, hard drive, as well as CPUs. They all come in different, obviously, performance capabilities or how much of uh, any one of these components you uh, can buy or purchase. But let me just say that the CPU is one of your crucial elements to be able to have a very fast running personal computer. Uh, we talk into uh, today with the uh, dual and the quad cores, and that's different than 10 years ago when we only had one CPU inside of uh, our system unit, and now we can have basically one chip that's acting like two or four CPUs. And so more, obviously the more you have of the, of the uh, cores, the more processing you're going to have. With that, if you run a lot of applications, they almost all need memory. Memory is designed to be a short-term storage location. In other words, if memory doesn't have any power to keep running, the information that's in memory will be gone. It's that short-term. It's designed to be volatile and also to be fast, to be able to work with the CPU and being able to exchange information from one application to another. Your permanent storage is on the hard drive. That's where we uh, magnetically will store information. It doesn't require to uh, have power, except for when it's running. But if you turn the power off, whatever you've stored will still be there. Those are crucial components, like I said, to have a well-running PC. In the world of the network interface card and, uh, or the wireless connections, most often the Wi-Fi is mostly about uh, the uh, type of Wi-Fi, as far as the uh, throughput and the uh, connectivity and the distance you can go. And in today's world, we're looking at 802.11n as the most common use of Wi-Fi because it gives you the most distance and the best capability of having fast communications with the Internet. But remember, most of you who have home network connections through uh, cable or DSL probably 
won't need this much throughput because it will be more than what you have as a home user, but that's okay in case of uh, future growth. Um, again, like I said, we call that uh, the network interface card. Uh, there's also a wired option that you might see if you're at work working with a, a PC. But again, that's the system unit. That's the core of the personal computers. Most everything else we can look at, like a display device, is uh, considered a peripheral. Uh, and of course, what good is having this PC if you don't have a display device? But that is the, exa the idea of uh, what we're wanting, is to have a way of being able to interact with applications that are running uh, on the uh, actual system unit. And those applications also help us to be able to communicate with the other peripherals, such as uh, speakers, if you uh, want to be able to have output of sound for watching uh, online videos, streaming uh, media, those types of things. If you want the uh, hard copy of uh, any data that you're working with, of course, there we would have the printer. And we also have to have input devices. Now, the keyboard is the most common input device that uh, you would be using. Again, they come in a variety of styles, some designed for ergonomics so it uh, doesn't put any uh, stress on the neck or the shoulders. Uh, some may or may not have the extra keypad for uh, the numbers of your, that you want to use. Another input device that we see is uh, called the mouse. We often actually called the uh, mouse a pointing device because the uh, mouse's job was to uh, basically uh, allow you to put, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to redraw the monitor here so you can see my ink, to uh, be able to uh, create an XY combination of where your pointing device is on the screen so that when you click on it, it would register as a certain spot and then uh, Windows would be able to look and see what was being drawn there, what kind of button uh, that you were clicking on or a box that you can enter some information in and respond appropriately. And so, of course, that means the mouse uh, would require the movement uh, with your hand to move it back and forth to be able to get to that XY coordinates and to be able to do the clicks. So anything else that you add on here, as I said, would still be considered a type of peripheral. If some of you get into uh, gaming mode and you want a joystick, uh, you normally would probably have uh, one that would connect through a USB cord or cable uh, into the PC. And depending on the system unit, the USB uh, uh, options may be in the back of the machine. Some will also have uh, USB in the front of the uh, system unit. And, uh, you, of course, the nice thing about these peripherals is they can only fit into one spot. So you can't accidentally plug a USB into uh, something like a uh, speaker jack or uh, some other type of, uh, of um, connection like the one you would use for the monitor. And in today's world, most any of these that you set up out of the box will give you a color-coordinated uh, map of uh, showing you how to put them all together.